السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين All praises due to Allah and may Allah's peace and blessings be upon his final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Last week we talked about the prohibited times for prayer Who can tell me these five times in order? Yes, he did not attend. He did not attend. He told you, Yalla Taib, tell me. No, I know, I know. I'm saying that there are five prohibited times. Do you know them? Best this he told you? By? From an order, from the from Fajr. Okay, after Fajr prayer. After Ishraq. The prohibition is strong here. Tayyip, continue. So it's not Dhuhr time, it's, it's the 10 minutes before Dhuhr Adhan. So Dhuhr starts, see Dhuhr time when it is, it's 7 to 10 minutes before Adhan. This is the prohibited time. Okay, after Asr. After Asr, we say after Asr, it's after Asr prayer. So if a person, let's say he prayed Asr, so two people, one person prayed in Jama'ah, Asr, then he went back home. But for this person, خلاص, now there's a prohibition for praying until Maghrib. But his brother still did not pray Asr. So the prohibition for him now is not there. The prohibition is after praying Asr. After praying Asr, طيب. Then... كيف يدونه؟ continue العصر يلا it's 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 in عصر يعني it's it's in عصر before مغرب it's about to set يعني ب ب at sunset at sunset ten minutes or around yeah ten ten to fifteen minutes or or say like around thirteen minutes like this before مغرب أذان this is the fifth prohibition time. So, after Fajr prayer, uh, after Ishraq, so after Fajr prayer, it's a prohibited time. But if a person wanted to pray, for example, the Sunnah, he can. But at the prohibition time of Ishraq, it's better not to pray anything at Ishraq. He waits until the 10 or 15 minutes, and then he can pray. Dhuhr also, any yani these three times, which is after Ishraq, uh, before Dhuhr, and before uh, Maghrib, these times the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prohibited us to pray and prohibited us to bury the dead. So the, the, it's much more strict. The prohibition here is much more severe compared to the other, to, compared to the other times. Yes, it's, yeah, it's one continuous time, but before Maghrib, it's a different prohibition. It's stronger. Because the Messenger Muhammad said, لا صلاة بعد العصر حتى تغيب الشمس. But in another hadith, he said there's a separate hadith that mentions three times. These three times is at Ishraq and before Dhuhr and before Maghrib, before the, uh, the sun sets. And we know that Aslam, before the sun sets, this is considered waqt uh, darura. So it's a time, a necessity time for Asr. For those who did not pray Asr, if they were excused, they may pray. But those who delayed Asr until the final 10 or 15 minutes, should they pray or not? But this is a question for you. Those who delayed Asr, uh, Asr prayer, they did not, without any excuse, they did not pray Asr. And it's 10 minutes to Maghrib. Do they pray Asr or do they say this is a prohibited time? Pray, huh? Comfortably pray, pray, Sheikh. Sure? Yes, correct. <laughs> Correct. Yes, they pray. What going to say? Okay, the, the rest, another important point. The restriction is only for nafil. But even if a person wanted to, to do qada of an obligatory prayer, yes, they said qada of an obligatory prayer can be done at any time. Why? They said because the, when we say this time is a prohibited time for worship, they're strictly talking about nafil. About nafil. Yes. Is, is you 
So okay, first of all, there's, there's, not a, there's no specific like sunnah for tawbah. There's a hadith that mentions praying two units. This is considered part of nafil. So it cannot be prayed in prohibited times. Yeah, and you might take it, you might be, for example, entering the masjid. These things, they may be prayed when we're talking about, for example, after asr or uh, after, after uh, fajr, but not at the ishraq time and not at before uh, what's called sunset. And this is, the prohibition here is much more severe. Yeah, see, this, these prayers, uh, uh, these prayers, even, even for example, uh, I'll give you an example, like uh, eclipse prayer. Eclipse prayer, sometimes it's prayed before Maghrib by 30 minutes. There's an eclipse. So here they say this is, these are the white asbab. These are prayers that have causes. They can be prayed in prohibited times. For example, two units, uh, the only exception maybe is two units of uh, tawaf. They can be prayed at any time. Two units of person does tawaf. After doing seven rounds, he prays soon as pray two units. These can be prayed at any time. Taib. Uh, and we then we spoke about the obligation of prayer. And we mentioned the khilaf of is if a person leaves the obligatory prayer out of laziness, is it considered kufr or not? I want, if you give me an opinion, tell me who said this. <laughs> what is the dispute? It's, it's not considered kufr. Uh, this is the jama'ah. The ja okay, no, 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 not jama'ah. This is the majority. The majority, okay. They're all ahl al jama'ah. This is the majority. But, uh, and we said, the, the madhab that said that this is kufr, leaving a prayer uh, out of laziness, this is the Hanbali madhab. Nevertheless, the majority, when they say it's not kufr, they still say this is the gravest, this is one of considered the most, yani, most severe major sin, one of the biggest major sins. And it's compared, they say there is no physical action that is much worse than this. They said even adultery and drinking alcohol is nothing compared to leaving prayer. Even so, though they said it's not kufr, but still they said there's no other sin that is even comparable to it except maybe uh, associating partners with Allah. Other than this, they said there's nothing greater in, in sin compared to leaving an obligatory prayer. That's why some people say, okay, I don't do haram, I don't look at haram. But then he says, I don't pray. No, you see, not praying, this is even worse than all of this. This is worse than all of this. طيب. So this is a, an important point. Now we talk about an uh, important matter here, which is today's session, the conditions of prayer. So these conditions, six conditions of prayer, the prayer is considered invalid if, these six, if one of these conditions is not there. Any of these conditions, if one of them is not there, then this prayer is considered invalid. طيب. The first... Uh, the first two, or the first one is, of course, niya, intention. When we say about intention, is that the person intends this worship. And he comes, for example, and there's, subhanAllah, some people, they have a problem with, with intention. Not, in, not the, pro, the problem is not the intention itself. The problem is the exaggeration, waswasa. They start whispering. Yes, he, he comes to the masjid, he, he performs wudu. He comes to the masjid and he says, Maybe the intention is not there. Subhanallah, how is it not there? You made wudu and came to the masjid to pray. Okay, how do you say that there is no intention? The intention is there. Taib, the intention is there. What is, for example, we say that there's a problem with intention. For example, a person woke up from sleep. He woke up from sleep. Taib, he made wudu and then he went to the masjid. And he, he didn't pray dhuhr and asr. And he went to the masjid. And uh, he prayed, he wanted to pray Asr, but and he mixed up. He said, am I praying Dhuhr or Asr? What did I intend? Here it might happen. Here it might. Because he went to the masjid, he knows that he has to go. But he didn't even think, what, what prayer am I praying? This happens sometimes. I will see some, sometimes they break the prayer and then they intend, they, they pray again. This is one case. But if a person, yani, the intention is you coming to do the worship, خلاص, the intention is there. And then when you say the intention, for example, coming to pray Dhuhr, خلاص, you have the intention of Dhuhr. It is not necessary to pronounce the intention. طيب. التلفظ بالنية, saying for example, نويت أن أصلي صلاة المغر, نويت أن أصلي, this is not needed. 
Yes, some madhabs like the Shafi'i madhab, they pronounce this, they say pronouncing the intention. Not speaking, even, even they say, they say you do not speak it out loud, they say you pronounce it, and they say this is to help. But even that, many of the other madhabs said, this is aslan, not a sunnah, and it's not even something that should be valid, because end of the day, it's in the heart. Even if you say something, and your heart intends something else, what you have uttered or pronounced has no effect. The effect is what's in the heart, because the intention, where does it lie? It's in the heart. No matter what you say, it's in the heart. طيب. So, if you come to the masjid, wanting to pray, alhamdulillah, the intention is there. طيب. What if you, if you come to prayer, then you sat down, you recited some Qur'an, do you have to recall that intention again? They said, no, as, as long as you came and the intention is still there, there's a continuity, the intention is still there. There is nothing that has removed this intention. So if a person comes, he prays sunnah, then he stays, he does remembrance, he does dua, the intention is still there because he's still sitting here to pray. If somebody asks him, what are you doing? You say, okay, I'm waiting for the Isha prayer. So he knows the intention is there. huh? So, and don't, don't yeah, any complicate things. If you look at all that, what are, what are the hadiths regarding intention? Intention is the single most important thing in all worships. Yet there's only one hadith regarding the intention, which is innama al-a'malu bin-niyat. Innama al-a'malu bin-niyat. Tayyib. This is intention. Now there's physical, this is one, one condition. Now there's physical purity and ritual purity. Ritual purity is what we have spoken, what we have discussed regarding uh, in, uh, in matters of tahara. When we spoke about uh, how to do wudu, how to do ghusl, tayyib tayammum, this is all ritual purity. Tayyib. What about physical purity? Physical, ritual purity is from hadath. Physical purity is from najasa. And when we talk about physical purity, it is about three things. طيب, the place of prayer, your phys- the body, your physical body, and also what you wear, your garment. So as a condition for prayer, a Muslim should purify his body course from urine, uh, feces, and his clothes, and his place of prayer. So all these three things should be pure. But what is the place of prayer? The place of prayer is from the feet all the way to the place of sujood. So this area from when you stand up from your feet all the way to the place of sujood, this should be prayed. Now sometimes, subhanAllah, what if you did not know and there was najasa? If you did not know about it, then there's no issue. If you did not discover this najasa from, najasa from the start of your worship all the way until the end, then there are no worries. And it, does, it has no effect on your worship. But what if you knew about the najasa, but you covered it? Yani you have placed a mat on this najasa and prayed. So the area that you're praying on is considered tahir. Najasa is below this mat. So here it's okay. So for, you see this in the haram, for example, sometimes a small child urinates, they go and they put a covering on it so that people know, Aslan, there's najasa here. And anyways, if somebody did put a mat on this place and prayed, yes, the mat here, there is no najasa. The place where you're going to be worshipping, doing the worship, there's no najasa. Tayyip. Tayyip. Now we said that it's also important to differentiate between ritual and physical purity. We said that if a person forgot or a person was not aware of purity, he, he did the worship and he was not aware that there was najasa on his clothes or najasa on his body also, or najasa on the place of worship. Until he finished his worship, we say that as long as he did not know about it, his, his worship is valid. But on the other hand, if a person did a worship and he was, he forgot that he did not do wudu. Until he finishes his worship, we say, La, you have to go and repeat this worship. You have to go and repeat this worship. So this is uh, one of the main differences uh, between the two. Now let's talk about the third, or here we'll say the fourth condition, which is covering awrah. Covering aura and covering aura, this is where there are a lot of issues, and we see. Okay, it's an obligation to cover up 
in and outside prayer with a non-transparent material. When we say non-transparent, we mean that the complexion should not be visible. Some people, yani, they say, طيب, what if I wear a kandura, uh, it's, it's yani, a light kandura, it's somehow visible. No, no. Yani, yes, you might see your legs, but this is not considered transparent. Transparent where, where the complexion, yani, the skin, the color skin is visible. This is when we say خلاص, it's transparent. طيب, this uh, should not be used to cover up the aura. طيب, yes. Does Najasa break your wudu? You know, you asked me this same question in Book of Purity. Same question. طيب. Najasa, if a person performed wudu, طيب. and then Najasa fell on him, طيب. or he stepped on Najasa, let's say he stepped on Najasa, لا, his wudu is intact. He just needs to wash that Najasa from himself. Okay? طيب. So, for men, what is the awrah for prayer for men? Huh? Awrah to rajul for salah, yes. Uh, there is some... Now answer this question. What is the awrah uh, in salah? This question. There is except the spirit, this one, like, generally it's like, a, it's, a, it's from above the knee. Okay, from above the knee, okay, you did not include no, the knee. Okay, so here, this is, well, this is the best opinion, is that it's from the navel area all the way to the knee, but they said the knee is not included. The navel and the knee are not included in the aura. So sometimes if a person, let's say he's wearing something and part of his knee is uncovered, we say, it's better to cover, but is his prayer invalid? We say that this part, Aslan, there's a dispute. And maybe the, right, the stronger opinion is that the knee itself is not an aura. It's not a aura. طيب. While for women, the whole body, for a woman except the face, this is agreed upon. This is agreed upon. That the whole body for a woman, except the face, this is, this is what's agreed upon. But they differed regarding two things for a woman. What are they? Hands and? Hands and feet, always. Always this. Hands and feet. Hands and feet. Other than the hands and feet, there's no dispute. Like for example, the neck or so. No, there is no dispute regarding this. This should be covered in salah. The only thing that should not be covered in salah that there's a dispute are the hands and the feet. Yes. Uh, some women, instead of like wearing a habaya, they like wear like um, like they do a hijab, but they also wear like hands. Yeah. See, when we said before, as we mentioned, covering up. Look, awra or covering or what a woman wears in front of men or what she wears by herself, it's different. Now we're talking about salah. Even if she wears pants that she should not be wearing in front of men, but she did her worship in front of men. Is her worship valid? We say if she covered all of her body, even if she was wearing tight clothes, if she covered all of, his, all of her body except the face طيب, and hands, then uh, her, her prayer is valid. Now regarding the hands and the feet, some uh, the dispute here. Some madhabs, like Hanbali madhab, they say no, all should be covered. The hands and the feet should be covered. Maliki, Maliki, and Shafi'i madhab said no. The obligation is to cover the feet, but the hands may be uncovered. The hands may be uncovered, and of course, uh, Hanafi madhab said it is preferred to cover them. It is preferred to cover them. This is also uh, the opinion of Ibn Taymiyyah, saying that the feet may be uncovered, but it, what is preferred is to cover them. So these matters of dispute, yeah, definitely if a person wants to remove himself from dispute covering the feet and hands, definitely this is better. This is better. But if a person was following a certain madhab and one of these was uncovered, alas, so don't make a big deal. But definitely what is better, is to cover them. طيب. Now, regarding uncovering the awrah, when should the worship be repeated? So, when should we say, La, the awrah was uncovered, you need to repeat your worship. When do we say this? We say this when an excessive amount of the awrah is uncovered in terms of duration 
or in terms of what part of the awrah. For example, a person was praying. Yeah, for argument's sake, let's say he's praying at home by himself and his trousers fell. For like a moment, his trousers fell and then he suddenly took his trousers and then, subhanAllah, he pulled them up. So here the awrah was uncovered. But it was for a short period of time and he directly took and he directly pulled it. Here they say, this does not invalidate your prayer. Even what you might be saying, this is a big amount of da'ura that was uncovered. They say, yes, but he directly acted and directly covered it. But they said, what if it was a small amount of awrah? So for example, uh, again, the trousers, he knows for sure that the trousers were below the navel area and the part of the awrah, the stomach, the, the lower part of the stomach was uncovered and he left it. And he left it, he kept it like this. This person, we say his prayer is invalid. Why? Because even though it's a small amount of the awrah was uncovered, but he did not care. He was aware of it and he left it uncovered. Tayyip. So this here is, his prayer is invalid. But also, for example, for sisters who's wearing a hijab, Tayyip. If the hijab, subhanAllah, her daughter, she pulls the hijab, it was uncovered and then she directly, you know, took the time, she directly took the hijab and covered up. Allah's her prayer is valid. But what if the hijab was uncovered, she left it. She knows that it's uncovered, her head is uncovered, she left it. No, here we say the prayer is invalid. The prayer is invalid because one of the conditions are not met. But regarding tight clothes, you mentioned tight clothes. For men and women, what is the ruling? If the tight clothes, and if we're talking, if it's not transparent, but it's tight, it covered the awrah, the prayer is valid. Yes, it's disliked, but the prayer is valid. Tayyib, even for women wearing, for example, trousers, an Islamic and trousers and tight clothes, but she prayed in this. Look, her prayer is valid. Now, the prayer is valid, but her wearing this in front of men, is this allowed? No, this is something else. This is part of tabarruj, this is another matter. But her worship, her worship is valid. Her worship is valid. A common question, a certain thing that we see here, for example, some people coming to prayer, they, wear, they have shirts that have pictures of men or a cartoon character. And you see people, you know, arguing, Ay, akhi, wallah, we're going to start prayer. My Jew, haram, haram. The prayer is valid, ya The prayer is, let us pray. The prayer is valid. The prayer is valid. By regarding, yani regarding the opinion, what you, whatever you see this person, this does not affect his prayer. His prayer is valid. Yes, you might be saying he should not be wearing this tayyib, but for now, his prayer is valid. Join the jama'ah. But the imam is reciting Quran. So, this is something yani, very important. طيب. The next condition is the commencement of prayer time. Remember we spoke about that prayer, a person should start his worship after the prayer time enters. And when does the prayer time enter? It enters with the Adhan. It enters with the Adhan. You have these times nowadays, it's much easier. We, we studied the prayer times. If you hear the Adhan, then definitely the prayer time has entered. Now, for sisters at home, this question, always you get this question. I started takbirat al-ihram after I heard the imam saying Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Is my prayer valid? Yes. She started the opening takbir, takbirat al-ihram after the prayer time started. So that's okay. طيب, what if she started the takbirat al-ihram one minute? Okay, approximately, let's say for sure it's before the prayer time enters. Even if it was one minute, even if it, she was still standing up in worship, then the Adhan started. No, the whole prayer is invalid. The whole prayer, she should break the prayer, invalidate the prayer, and she should start again. She should start again. So starting the worship, when the Imam is doing takbir for the sisters at home, this is considered valid. You did your worship inside the prayer time. You did your worship inside the prayer time. So from the start, the takbir at al-ihram should be uh, should be after the prayer time enters. Taib, I have a question. And I mentioned this, I want to see who remembers. What about before the time ends? 
how much of our worship should be done before the time ends so that we say this person has prayed on time. Yes. There should be one unit. MashaAllah. Uh, okay. Remember why? Yes, I said this. You're right. But do you remember why is this so? We, okay, did we say, no, before, now you're changing. Before it's right. You said he prays one whole unit before the time ends, right? Yes, this is right. Because the Messenger Muhammad وسلم, said, Man adraka rak'atan min as-salah, faqad adraka salah. Whoever catches one unit in the time of the prayer, then he has caught the prayer. So if you prayed one unit in the time, then it's considered that you have prayed in time, on time. Even though if the three units were after the time ended. Yani for example, between Dhuhr and Asr. It's permissible to pray any time from the time that the Adhan starts, Dhuhr Adhan, all the way until uh, Asr Adhan. So I have a question. If a person pray delayed prayer for one hour, or come by Dhuhr Al Asr, one hour, 30 minutes, two hours? Two hours, 30 minutes? Huh? He delayed it for two hours. And then he prayed at the end of Dhuhr time. Is this disliked? Yes. Who said disliked? Now you're all scared. Huh? You're disliked? Leish. You prayed in the time. There's no necessity time. Asr and Asr and Isha. Is there's a necessity time that we should not delay after? And خلاص, the time inter the time is it's only for uh, for example Asr. The sooner the better because once the yellowing, yellow, the sun starts to get yellow, here it's a dislike time. So here if you delayed it aslan until you reach this time, then it's considered a sin, haram. Haram to delay it without an excuse. If you were excused, you were busy with something, you were not able to pray aslan, you were not, you, it was not possible for you to pray until the end time of asr, here it's permissible, no problem. Here it is permissible, no problem. So dhuhr, dhuhr, there is no dislike time. Dhuhr, there is no, sorry, there is no necessity time. It starts from the adhan, dhuhr adhan, this time starts from, oh, and it ends at asr adhan. So if a person prayed at the last minutes of dhuhr, he prayed one whole unit, and then the rest of the prayer was after asr adhan, we say this person has caught the prayer. He prayed it on time. Yes, it's not the best thing to do. The best thing is to pray it as soon as possible in the time, but we say that it's valid because when adraka rak'ata min as-salah, faqad adraka as-salah. The same thing with Jum'ah prayer. For those coming late to Jum'ah prayer, be careful. If you miss the second ruku' bowing of the Imam, then even if you catch the Jum'ah, you have to pray dhuhr. You don't pray Jum'ah. You don't pray Jum'ah. Huh? If, you if you don't catch the ruku', if you came late, the Imam said, Sami Allah al hamida of the second unit, Halas, you have to pray dhuhr. So you join the Imam, but <laughs> then you stand up, you pray four units. You don't pray two units. Yes. Uh, 20 minutes raising your hand, then you forgot the question. <laughs> Yes. So like, so, so like not, not until, it's, it's until when we say the adhan till the adhan because it's the adhan starts aslan with the prayer time. So that's why we that's why we said the end. Dhuhr time is from the start of Dhuhr adhan all the way until asr adhan. If if the adhan was on time. So yes, but if a person prayed one unit before the Dhuhr, before asr adhan, for example, he completed one whole unit, then he prayed it in time. So what's the question exactly? But that's not the case for all pray that's not the case for all prayers. No, no. He started one whole unit in Dhuhr time. But he prayed the second, third, fourth units of Dhuhr in Asr Adhan. Then he prayed it on time because one whole unit was in Dhuhr. He starts Dhuhr in Asr Adhan. No, he, he, he has to pray it, but it's considered that he delayed it until the next prayer. Um, uh, one question. Yes. 
لا لا it's 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 supposed to be with the time. The adhan is supposed to be according to this. Well, look, it depends on the time there. I mean, it's not. They delay it, yani? Yes. No, it's, it's, look, the worship should be done if the time enters. If you know for a fact, for, let me give you an example. If you know for a fact that, for example, Awqaf said, look, after the time enters, by 10 minutes, then you do the adhan. For example, if you know this for a fact, so it's not until, so we don't say a, a woman cannot pray until the adhan. No, we say as soon as the time enters, she can pray. Because we know that the, they know that the time enters, and then after 10 minutes, the adhan starts. But anyways, the sunnah, as we mentioned, that the adhan should be starting at the time, as soon as the time enters, after the time enters. And we mentioned that the mu'adhan, he gets more reward than the imam because the mu'adhan has the big responsibility. You know, calculating the time of every worship. Now it's easy, you have the time. But before, on the sun, he has to see the shadows. You know, it's increasing and he has to know when is it. And you know, in summer and winter, it keeps on changing. A lot of work. Even the Imam is resting. The Mu'addin is doing all of this. That's why the Mu'addin, his reward is the greatest of rewards. Yes. La, 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 la. But there, I think, I think it's because there's a thing in the Hanafi Madhab regarding some prayers that they, they have uh, a thing in the Madhab itself. Yes, they have something in the Madhab. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I was saying this. But if the prayer time enters and you're sure that the prayer time enters, well, you can pray. Uh, is it haram or dislike to arrive at, like, after, after the first ruh'ah of uh, Salat al Jama'ah? Because you missed the Quran and you also arrived at the Salat? Is, is it disliked? Of course, uh, the, la, the a person. Look, details of this, we'll be discussing it in Jum'ah prayer. Because I don't want to mention all the details of the Adhan and the second Adhan and all the rulings regarding this, that all transactions are invalid after the second Adhan. All these things Salah will be mentioning in the But of course, as soon as a person should start as early as possible to go to the Masjid because of the reward. And definitely not miss the, uh, the Jum'ah and missing Jum'ahs by missing these two units. Okay. Okay. Uh, facing the Qibla. Facing the Qibla. The Messenger Muhammad said, Ma bayna al Mashriqi wal Maghrib Qibla. Whatever is between the East and the West is Qibla. This is for a person in Medina. Like between East and West is Qibla. So, what does this mean? This means that we should be facing the direction, the direction of Mecca and not the exact point of the Kaaba. Might be saying, Shaykh, nowadays it's detailed, we can do this. To a certain extent, you can. But they say the further away you are from the Kaaba, the easier it is. So when, he, when the Messenger Muhammad وسلم, said, Ma al wal Maghrib Qibla, whatever, whatever is between the East and West is considered Qibla, they said yani, deviations, slight deviations to the right and to the left is still considered, you're still facing the direction of Kaaba. And women, sometimes they make a lot of problems regarding this. The child moves the mat a bit to the left. To the, oh, my prayer is invalid. La, la, the prayer is valid still. Yani, or you sometimes people, old men, <laughs> the imam, for example, the prayer mat, slightly to the left because he did sujood. Then he said, we didn't pray according to the qibla. Our prayer is invalid. We have some people like this. Look, this is like, for argument's sake, and it, my behind here is the Qibla, but slight deviation it, till here. So we're still facing the Qibla. We're still facing the Qibla. طيب, when are we not facing the Qibla? If, for example, here, if you turn all the way here, your shoulders to the Qibla, here definitely we're not facing the Qibla. But all of this, all the way till here, you're still facing the Qibla. طيب, what's between the east and west is considered the Qibla. So slight, but of course you don't go, if you know that, if you know for a fact that this is the direction of Qibla, خلاص, you face it. But we say if you discover that there's slight you know, deviation in your worship, no problem, no issues. Type to the left or to the right, you're still facing the direction. Is this clear? Is this clear? Type.
Okay, the question is, okay, you see, in worship, in the prayer, you turned. And then you, he, he did. <laughs> طيب, my question is, okay, we'll, we'll be discussing this here, but did you put any effort in finding the Qibla or you just said, Allah, Bismillah. You felt, you felt this is the Qibla? What made you choose this direction? Yeah? Okay, you don't know, you guessed? Are you, uh, this is the point. <laughs> you guessed, yeah? Type, you should, guessing, some of the abs regarding this, if a person guessed, even if he got it right, guessing, they said, Aslan, it's invalid. Because it's guessing, you should never guess. At least you have someone with you, I should ask. Type, or you should try to find out. But if a person put some effort and he tried to find where the Qibla, he asked, and then somebody told him, the Qibla is here. Then he prayed. Afterwards, he discovered that the Qibla is wrong. He said, no, your prayer is valid because you actually don't cause this. But here, where are the causes? Yeah, okay. <laughs> you, <laughs> you turned after, after guessing, after somebody corrected you. So this person looked at you praying one whole rak'ah. And then he said, Yaqhi, let me tell him, miskeen. Uh, let me tell him, miskeen, let me tell him where the qibla is. Do uh, you remember the worship? Repeat it. <laughs> repeat it, repeat it again. Just in case, repeat it again. Because the whole unit, Asana, you, you prayed based on guessing. So yeah, some other, actually, I think all of them will say this is invalid. Repeat it, huh? Here, you did not know. You didn't, but since it's one and you know which worship it is, it's better to repeat it, okay? Some people might ask, Shaykh, we prayed one whole year wrong Qibla. It happens. One whole year because they're living, the woman, they're praying, they think this is the Qibla. So one whole year they prayed wrong Qibla. And then they discovered that the Qibla is in the, another direction. They said, should we repeat all this? They said, if it was based, they, yani, whatever happened in the past, they tried, they thought this was the Qibla based on their ijtihad. Yani, they thought... They saw the masjid down, people are worshipping, they, they said, Khas, then this should be the Qibla. Here they did put some effort, their prayer, inshallah, is valid. But now that they know what the right direction is, they should be facing the right direction. Uh, subhanAllah, it happened that uh, some of my friends, okay, I gave them the keys to my apartment in Medina, they entered, they found the prayer mat. So the woman, she went and prayed. But it, the prayer mat, there is no mark. Taib, she said, I, I found it and I prayed. No, no, sorry. There's a mark, the picture of a masjid, but I always used it upside down. So it's not facing the Qibla, it's facing the other direction. So she directly, she said, the direction, the masjid is the other direction. So she prayed. I told him, Yaqi, by the way, the, the prayer mat, I always, it's always faced the opposite direction. It's like, why would you do this? <laughs> to confuse the people? It's like, Yaqi, subhanAllah, and it was always like this. Yani. So, she, her ijtihad was right. Yani, her ijtihad, the prayer mat is this. And if we obviously the person was praying, so this could be the qibla. She was praying the opposite direction. So, so it happens, yani. And sometimes, yani, it's, uh, nowadays it's easy, alhamdulillah. We all have mobile phones. And also, most hotels, yani, they'll, they'll show you the direction of the qibla. Yeah? Huh? Yeah, long, much. <laughs> uh, before there wasn't, huh? Tayyip. So facing the Qibla is facing, oh, what about people in Mecca? People in Mecca, they're not excused. Khalas, the masjid is clear. They should, people in Mecca should be facing the masjid. Tayyip. Inside the masjid, you should be facing the Kaaba. Tayyip. So outside Mecca, you should be facing the direction of Mecca itself. Tayyip, when is it pardoned not to face the Qibla if it was not possible to face it? Yeah, where, for example, uh, uh, no, Keith, the desert, you can find the Qibla. If you're on, a, on something that is moving, on a, car for, on a car, for example, and you have to do your worship, and the time is going to end, you have to do your worship. Okay, first of all, for Nafil prayer, Nafil prayer, while traveling, you can pray it on the car, even while sitting down, no problem. Nafil, even if there is an, uh, no excuse, you, there, even if you, were, uh, you had no excuse, you can still pray Nafil on the car, sitting down in a bus, Facing the Qibla or not facing the Qibla, this is no problem. The Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi used to pray on his mount, wherever the mount would face, Sunnah. And the Ibn Umar used to pray, for example, Witr, while he was on his camel, wherever the camel would face, while he was traveling, no problem. But the issue is in obligatory prayers. Obligatory prayers, as a condition, you should be facing the Qibla. 
But sometimes you're in a situation that you, it's impossible. And you keep on moving. How will you face the Qibla? Like, for example, you're on the, on the plane, for example. On the plane, you want to pray, you want to pray uh, Fajr prayer. You want to pray Fajr prayer. And by the way, all prayers, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha, it's easier because you can combine. Yeah, you can see maybe the plane will land. You can pray Dhuhr and Asr together at the start of Dhuhr time or at the end of Asr time. Except for Fajr. Fajr, it's not combined with anything. And it has to be prayed on time. So you perform Dudu, and on, in, the air, in the airport, still, the Fajr time still did not enter. So you couldn't pray. So once you entered the plane, Fajr Adhan started. But you, and خلاص, you started flying now. And the plane will keep on turning. Where's the, you cannot keep on facing. And you have to sit down. If you go stand up, they'll tell you sit down. خلاص, here you sit down and you do your worship, whatever you're facing. Because it's impossible to face the Qibla. Or very difficult. صح? This is one of the things. يعني. Or for example, a person who was sick. A person who's unable to pray except uh, on his, uh, what's it called, hospital bed. طيب. He cannot turn to face the Qibla. يعني. By the way, for a person who's lying down, how is he facing the Qibla? If a person is praying while lying down, is it the face or is it the feet? Feet, yes, feet. Wherever your feet are facing, so this is the Qibla. So if he was not able to face the Qibla, خلاص, he prays because he's unable to face the Qibla. خلاص, he prays wherever uh, he is. طيب. So these are the conditions. These are the conditions regarding uh, worship. There are a few matters that I want to mention regarding the intention. Regarding the intention, which is the final uh, condition. Can a person change the intention inside the prayer? No. Okay, first of all, first of all, changing an oblig in an obligatory prayer, changing the intention from obligatory to another obligatory prayer, here you're not allowed. Both of them will be invalid. So you're not allowed to change the intention of the obligatory prayers. But what about changing from obligatory prayer to sunnah? Yani inside the worship itself, you can. You can change from obligatory worship to a sunnah. But you might say, why would I need to do this? There might be some situations, we don't want to mention here, but you might need this. But changing intention from obligatory to sunnah, this is a lot. I'll give you an example. When can this be used? You were worshipping, you came late for dhuhr, you're praying by yourself. You're praying by yourself. And you're, you're about to do salam at the end of your worship by yourself. And then you heard the door open, a group of people entered. Taib, you want, you want jama'ah, but now you're going to finish your worship. And they, they, these people will not come and pray with you. They say this person might be praying, so we want to pray by, by, uh, together. So here you may intend changing the worship that you're doing from fard to, to nafil, and then doing salam, and then praying with them the obligatory prayer. Do you understand this? Yes, you, so this well, this uh, uh, Dhuhr prayer, you changed it to Nafil. Because خلاص, you were about to do Salam and you heard you want to do the Jama'ah, uh, you wanted to pray Dhuhr and Jama'ah. So you change the intention to, uh, for, to Nafil and then you went and prayed Jama'ah with them. This is one situation. So changing from an obligatory worship to Nafil, you can. طيب, uh, they said also from... You're not allowed to change, for example, from a certain preferred, uh, for, for a certain, a specific preferred sunnah to another. Yeah, for example, you're praying uh, two units of duha, and then in the worship, you said, no, I want to do it two, I forgot to pray sunnah fajr, so I will change it to sunnah fajr. Inside the worship itself, you cannot. Pray duha, finish, and then pray sunnah by itself. So the, the, clear, the easiest one is changing from, uh, so the one that is surely that you're able to do changing from obligatory prayer to sunnah. Now, كيف كيف for, you mean dhuhr? Nafil, yes, what about it? So instead of praying it for, he prays it to, صح? Okay, first of all, uh, sunnah prayer should be prayed in twos. 
It was, yeah, because there's a nation, Salatul Layl, Mathna, Mathna, there's another nation, Salatul Layl, and Nahar. So, not just night prayer, night prayer and day prayer should be two units, two units. And the only madhab that I know Allah is that prays Dhuhr, four units together, is the Hanfi madhab, maybe. I think the Hanfi madhab is the, yeah, the Sunnahs prayed four together. But if a person prayed, yeah, no problem. But it's better to keep it two, two. So here, for example, intending to pray two instead of four, since I think it's, it's okay. I don't know in the madhab, the Hanfi madhab, maybe they have something that's not loved, Allah alam. No, no, but whatever you're taught, you apply. Yani you're a person, now you're studying. So this is what you were taught. Khalas, you're following this. Then you were taught something else. Khalas, you can change if you know that this is you know, a stronger opinion, you can change. Now, I want to mention uh, an important matter here regarding the intention of the Imam and the intention of the follower. Should they be the same or not? And also, should the Imam intend being Imam? The, the, the strictest madhab, madhab regarding this is the Hanbali Madhab. Yani, the Hanbali Madhab says that the Imam should intend being an Imam. Otherwise, the prayer for the follower will be invalid. It's, yani, the Imam, he should have another intention. Not just I'm praying Lord, no, I'm praying Lord. I'm also praying as an Imam. So, yani, Allah alam, but the majority here, they say this is uh, not a condition. But... Yani this matter, if a, per, if a person praying an imam, should, he should be aware of this. He should have the intention of being an imam, and he should also pray, yani, and uh, yani, he should be aware of this. That's why a person being an imam should, should be a person who understands, you know, fiqh. He should know the rulings. Now, can the follower separate from the imam? Can the follower separate from the imam? Yani for example, you're praying by them. Can, can you separate? Yes. Can you intend separation in the middle of the prayer? Yes. For whatever reason. Do you know the story, a story that this happened? The companions? La, la, la. He separates and he prays, he intends praying by himself and he finishes. Shufiq, Ma'at, Shufiq. No? لا 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 remember the story with Mu'adh ibn Jabal he prayed behind the messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and then he, when he prayed Imam you know to his people he prayed he started reciting Surah Al-Baqarah and one of the people behind him خلاص and he was very tired he said he separated from the Jama'ah and he prayed by himself this is the narration he prayed by himself and then he went and complained to the messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم <laughs> Said, and he said, they, they told him he's a munafiq and he, he left the jama'ah. He said, I wanted to sleep. I have work in the morning and I was very tired. And Mu'adh prayed, Surah al The messenger got very angry with Mu'adh. And as they said, he got extremely angry. His face was red. And he said, are you testing the people of their religion? Putting, making a fitna for them? He said, they should have recited, وَالشَّمْسُ وَضُحَاهَا and he, these short because behind him, people, some people they have work, some people are weak. So, but also we don't go the, the other extreme. And I remember in Hajj, before, still I did not pray. A man came to me, young, well, he is very strong. He said, please, please, huh, make it quick. Okay, what, 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 what is quick? Is that make your worship quick? Oh, I still did not start, Bismillah. I still did not start, by you. And yeah, well, yeah, he, as if maybe he will tell me just without, just recite Fatiha and that's it. And it's not that we have work, we're in Mina. And yeah, we're sitting, Asla, we're sitting. We're in Mina, we're all sitting, talking and eating. He said, Yalam, do the prayer quick. And yeah, we, there should be a norm. And yeah, for example, reciting Washams wa Duhaha with the Surah Al Fatiha, proper recitation. Plus, this is normal. Uh, why do I say this? Uh, separating from the Imam. The matter is, can a person separate from the Imam? Yes. For example, uh, you're praying behind an imam, طيب, and suddenly you got very dizzy, and you fear that uh, you're in the, for example, third unit, and you fear that, خلاص, or, or maybe, for example, you fear that uh, your wudu will break, or uh, any reason that something's wrong, you have to leave the prayer. But what should you do? You can separate from the imam and continue your worship quickly, and then leave. This is if there's an excuse. It's better not to, but if there's an excuse, you can do this. Or for example, your son ran out and you cannot concentrate. 
And you know, if you hear him crying, so you can just intend separation from the Imam and go. Where did we get this from? This man, when he separated from Mu'ad, the messenger Muhammad Wasallam did not say, why did you separate or this is invalid or... طيب. Huh? But, but it's not convenient. And you say, Wallah, today, you know, I'll pray two units with the Imam, two units I'll separate. No, it's not like this. If there's a need, you know, something very important, طيب, you do this. Otherwise, no, you pray with the Imam. Otherwise, you lose the reward. Otherwise, you lose the reward. And you come to the masjid to separate Wallah from the Imam. <laughs> Doesn't make sense here. Are you, uh, you, you're praying next to someone who's sick, or what? Wallahi <laughs> Shaykh, at the time of Corona, we all had this. If somebody sneezes, I want to do sujood. The Imam is still in Raku'a, ya khay. It happened. Yeah, at that time, yeah, it was crazy. I can, alhamdulillah, many people did not know this ruling, otherwise, you would see in the same jama'ah, three, four people praying separately, each one doing ruku and sujood. But if this is an advice. If a person is really sick, but he said, no, do it for Allah. Do it for Allah, stay home. You know why? Because you, someone else, you might go to the masjid, they'll all get sick. If you're sick, Allah, pray at home, no problem. Pray at home, yeah, until you get well. Because not only you say, no, but I can't. It's not about you only. When you pray next to someone, Make, you're making noises. Yeah, he's, first of all, he cannot concentrate in his worship. Number two, he'll be afraid to get sick. Just like yourself. Yeah. He'll be he'll say, oh Allah, I'm going to get sick. I am going to get sick. This person now, he's, look, he's sneezing also. You'll get sick. Yeah. You'll feel this in the prayer. So it's better for him, yeah, he pray at home. Or he's coughing and running, running nose. No, pray at home. May Allah Azza wa give you shifa. Once, alhamdulillah, you feel good, come to the masjid. So this is any as an advice eh, to do this. You might you don't say no, no, but I'll do it for Allah. It's that you're affecting the jama'ah. You're affecting the jama'ah. The same thing with the person, for example, affecting the jama'ah, the matter of the mobile phones. And you say no, for Allah, I will not touch my mobile phone. And it's ringing. The whole jama'ah is affected. The whole jama'ah. Everyone is listening to this ringtone, and we cannot hear the imam. You say, Astaghfirullah, I will not touch. No, Astaghfirullah for what you're doing. What you're doing is haram because everyone now is preoccupied with this sound. Until now, subhanAllah, I remember when I was young, back then it was very common. Drivers, they have, the ringtone is an Indian song. And it goes on. And I, will, uh, I was angry. I said, well, I don't understand a single word. It's like from the imam. He's like, no, from this song. It's Indian song. He put something that we understand. <laughs> So it affects the whole jama'ah. It affects the whole and the imam. But the problem, so the problem said, no, Sheikh, if I move, my prayer will be invalid. Who said movement for the benefit of the prayer does not invalidate your worship? But if you, even you see how many movements, no problem. Yeah, you move, take your phone, type decline to answer, and put it on side, put it back. Because these movements are for the benefit of the prayer. So it's okay, it's permissible. You, you, you take them? Well, I, I mean, these, see, you know, some, some, I, I do not see uh, that a parent brings a child and go, comes to Salah, especially a child younger than seven, unless it was, imp- he has no place to go. I mean, he cannot go home and he has to pray. This is the only excuse. Otherwise, if you're unable to, you have a child with you, pray at home. It's okay. Otherwise, bringing your child and you have no control and it's affecting the whole jama'ah. Of course, this masjid is famous. Very famous for this. Years. And another person taking, taking his child? So, so you're going to take the child and the person? Sheikh, <laughs> you think you're abducting the child? <laughs> now let's see his khushu'a. Let's say, yalla, stay in prayer. <laughs> طيب. Uh, طيب. With this we will end. Inshallah, next week we'll start the pillars of prayer. And uh, this document will be sent on the WhatsApp group for you to start memorizing the pillars of prayer so that we know at least 
يعني when we talk about the rulings so that you're aware of the rulings هذا والله أعلم وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم جزاكم الله خير